This is I Should Be Writing, Season 17, Episode 46. Well, I should be writing. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty, and uh, this is my show that I've been doing since 2005. I like to talk about writing. I like to talk about the things that stop us from writing, and um, it streams live on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays, and is uh, found on my RSS feed later on in the week. I am completely destroyed. I... Uh, Went out for a run this morning, and I i won't tell the long story, just the fact that I tried to run through a new neighborhood, which included a run around a lake, and everything was a lot longer than I thought it would be. And when I got home, it turns out I'd gone for about four and a half miles, not all running. And considering I'm still in the, mi in the last like quarter of a couch to 5k program that one hurt so uh we'll see how i'm moving tomorrow but yeah i i had nine thousand steps before uh 10 o'clock today that was a lot and i'm very tired now but um i also did a thing i, th I think i've talked about this i'm doing a class on uh sitcom writing with brent forrester who's written for King of the Hill and The Office and a lot of other stuff. And um, one of our homework assignments was to actually find a pitch partner and pitch what you're working on to them. And I found somebody who'd been in another class I took. And so we made a, a meeting this morning to meet and talk, do our pitches to each other and ask the questions that you might not have thought of. So it was really useful. So, um, I have no news. Like, I guess the only news I have is my, uh, editor got back to me about my novella and he likes the way it's sounding so far. So I have the green light to go ahead, which feels pretty good. And I am really trying to focus on projects that are fun for me, but not paying immediately. So, We'll see where that goes. And um, that's about it for good news, or any news really. Uh, if anybody in the chat has some good news, I'd love to share it. I'd love to hit the yay button. I had some fun ideas for um, adding some sound effects when to the, like right now all, all I have is the applause on the yay button, but there are a couple of other things. Last night, my daughter showed me the um, a video from Central Park, which I didn't know David Diggs was playing an old white woman in, and she showed me a, the, one of the songs that uh, that character sings, and it's pretty awesome. So uh, I was listening to that on my run today, and I'm trying to figure out if I could take... Uh, a sample of that and turn it into uh, an alert on my stream because it's just too much fun. Also, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with what would you think, what, what, what thing happening in a stream do you think would be appropriate to add a soundbite of your favorite band of all time mispronouncing your name? I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking suggestions. Let's see, we got a uh, niece graduated from high school. That's amazing, Lee, and I'm so sorry your niece is doing this in the pandemic. I'm sure Numbers Ninja can uh, sympathize. And tomorrow is Starry Eyed Green's birthday. Okay, first the yay for the niece and graduation. I hope uh, things improve as the pandemic stuff improves. And yay birthday, Starry Eyed Green. Awesome.
But yeah, is uh, someone you've admired for 30... Uh, I'll, yeah, almost exactly 30 years. Someone you've admired for almost 30 years mispronounces your name. Do you put that on like a death it, when you're gaming or a, rant, a sort of fail thing? Or do you just embrace it and make it like a triumphant sound? I don't know, but I really want to do it. But if y'all have any ideas, I'd love to hear them because I want to start playing, I want to start playing around with, with, uh, audio a little bit more. Funny fail, sad trombone. Yeah, those are all the same kind of instances. Or epic fail. Hey, Todd. I was about to say, I'm, I'm uh, annoyed I don't have enough cause to use the sad button, but that sounds ridiculous. But I did work hard ish to make a uh, sad event happen but it doesn't happen very often so I'll just hit the sad button every once in a while because I want everyone to see the sad happen it just amuses me um all right so if we have no we got the niece and we got the grad wait we got the graduating niece and the birthday for starry-eyed did I get that right yeah so, yeah, I, I I wanted to talk about two things today that I think, I, I think they might be related. If they're not, it'll just be a little bit about one and a little bit about the other. But I'm thinking about confidence again, because I get, I don't know if it feels like imposter syndrome or something else, but a lot of times I'll think, I'll see others doing ambitious things and I'll think, well, I, I don't know enough to do that. A lot of times it involves like coaching or teaching or something. And then I look and see what people are putting out there as classes. And then I think that's not any better than what I would have come up with. And, you know, I have a very low opinion of myself, so this is not me just going, oh, I could do that. This is really honestly going, wait, I could do that. And then what's separating me from them? And it's confidence. It's like they can just walk up there and say, I will talk for half an hour about one little thing about writing and you'll pay me $20. And uh, I don't have that. I'm, I'm still shocked people listen to my free show that's been going on for 17 years. Uh, yeah, imposter syndrome on steroids, I guess, but confidence is the weirdest human emotion because is, is it an emotion or is it just a way of acting? I don't know. But the thing is, is that it's nice when you feel it. It really is. When you're sure you can do something, it feels great. But when you don't feel it, you have a decision to make and that decision is whether to show that you don't feel it or pretend. And, um, you know, a lot of people do the thing at, 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 I just watched a sitcom with this thing. It's basically if you act like you belong somewhere, no one's going to question you. That's, that's confidence. That's just like, I'm going to pretend that I belong here. I have the confidence that I belong here. I may be trembling inside, but I'm just going to act like it. So, it feels like confidence is just a beneficial lie sometimes. And, you know, it goes to con man. It, it, it connects to con man, which is somebody who's so confident that they can pull themselves off as someone you can trust that you will pay them or be manipulated in some other way. I uh, took a free webinar from somebody who's you know, they do the whole, hey, I started from nothing. And then now my coaching business is making seven figures a year. And I'm so happy and smart. And you should really, really look at my pro my thing. And it only costs a $1,000. And I'm realizing it's, that's her job. It's like, 
she won't be teaching you to tell other people how to earn money. It's just like, it, it just feels weird that, that her job is to make money off of telling you what her job is. I'm not even saying that right. Am I? It's like, I, I do this lecture I'm doing right now so well that you're going to pay me. Yeah, her job is marketing herself, not... Yeah, and if you try to market yourself or what you want to offer, then it may not work as well because what you're trying... What a lot of people try to do is, is offer advice on how to do something. Another profession other than getting people to buy things. But her job is just... I'm going to teach you how to make money by teaching somebody else how to write to pick something at random. And of course she's successful because that's what she's, she's selling you the, she's selling shovels during the gold rush. And those are the people that made the money. So I'm thinking, even if, if I take her course, I'm not going to learn how, I'm not going to be a coach for other people to learn how to be a coach. I'm going, I would do something in writing, maybe podcasting, I don't know. But all of her images and her website and everything is so polished and professional. It's, it's shiny. I'll admit it. But I'm honestly like, I took the free webinar and I got nothing out of it. Because there was a lot of, you know, I started with nothing and now I'm making seven, seven figures convincing people like you to give me money. I am just not. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does feel like a pyramid scheme. Kids are asleep. Uh, they... Selling the marketing scheme to as many people as possible, and they turn out and resell it. Yes, that's my... Yeah, blogging. People who blog about making money. People who... <laughs> I can't even say it, Ansela. Those are my thoughts about people who make money blogging about how to make money blogging. Exactly. My favorite thing related to this was a book on Amazon called How to Make a Million Bucks Selling Books on Amazon, and it was a book that sold for $1 million. <laughs> Did somebody buy it? People out there, they do weird stuff with all their money. Um, pardon me showing my age here, but one of the first big scandal it's not scandals, but one of the first big newsmakers to come out of the iPhone or I, um, iPad, iPod, all the Apple stuff, was somebody who wrote a uh, an app that said, I am rich. And all the app was, we just put up a picture of like a big ruby. And the app costs $1,000. And they sold six before Apple took it down. Six. So, yeah, people might, I don't know. And then, you know, you've got somebody else who was, it's, it's like also that, that confidence in pricing, especially when it comes to self-pub stuff. And I'm not putting down self-pub people. I know lots of people who work their butts off and make a good living doing self-pub and making really quality stuff, but... I got contacted by somebody who said that they had a uh, an ebook to help writers with finances, and it was co-written by her and a uh, an accountant who knows like the freelance business. And I thought this sounds awesome. It was fifty dollars. An ebook was fifty dollars, and I said, "This sounds good, but I'm I don't I don't feel honest." telling my audience to buy a $50 ebook. And, 
you know, she was polite and said, you know, you could, I can give you like a, a, a discount code. And I'm like, oh, so they could buy a $40 ebook. That's so much. No, <laughs> no. I bought a $30 ebook on streaming and I got the audiobook with it and it was a waste of money. It's just somebody else telling you how to make money streaming, but she's making money talking about how to make money streaming, not actually creating content that is outside of the do exactly what I'm doing and then you can make the money I'm making. Um, I'm talking with some people at Speakeasy to do a writing class and that one looks fun. And, uh, they also said that if I do one, I can give a discount to my existing audience. So, uh, if I do that, I will be doing so for the y'all who've supported me for so long. That is the whole self-help marketing trap. Yeah. If you're so confident, show me how to, show me how to make money doing what you're telling me to do, not doing what you do. It's so reflective. I'm getting a little lost, but yeah. And you wonder how many times can these people make a Twitch video going, here's why you're not making money on Twitch. But yeah, they, they make those videos and then they, next week they will switch the wording and say, how can I make more money on Twitch? And they always do close-ups of their faces with exaggerated facial expressions, which I, I guess I could do, but I would feel ridiculous. I would. I don't know. I don't know if I could pull that off and still look myself in the mirror. So the other thing, I don't know if this is connected, but it's been on my mind is, uh, grudges. Grudges, jealousy, any of those feelings that you're going to feel in your creative career. I don't care how pure and wonderful you are. You will feel it. And first, you remind yourself to feel it, to, to have that emotion and sit and, and let your inner, inner person sit in the corner and pout, furiously pout the, it was the cat that knocked over the vase, not me, but mom won't believe me pout. Don't take it online. I'm just saying that if you got your grudges and got your jealousies, keep them in, talk to a close friend about it. Don't take it online, but people say that, that grudges aren't good for you because you're allowing the person you hate to live on in your head free of charge. Like anyone pays rent to live in your head, but whatever. And they're probably not giving any brain cycles to you. Like I, I got, I got harassed on a road while driving one time and it scared me. And I still think about that time. I know that the people who did it probably do that th thing all the time. And I am nowhere near a memory in their head. And on one hand, the, the grudges and the, and the long memories might protect you. <laughs> Sure, I'll tell the story. Why not? Um, when I, I left Facebook several years ago and then I got into my MFA program that was a little residency and found out that everybody used Facebook. So I got back on it on a minimal, minimal basis to like talk to my fellow students during the non-residency period. And then I started looking at people in my, from my high school and I saw a picture of a guy and my initial first reaction was extreme dislike, but I couldn't remember him. I reacted emotionally to his picture, but I could not remember him. 
And then finally I remembered, oh, that's right, you're the one who gave an STD to a friend of mine. So sometimes grudges are useful. It'll keep you keep you safe. Remind you not to befriend those people. Um, but on the other hand, if you have a professional grudge, you got to look at how much it's costing you. And I guess this is more of a ditch digger thing. But really, it's on one hand, you want to have your integrity and not say, collaborate with a known virulent homophobe in your state. But if an opportunity comes up that is involves someone you had a disagreement with a couple of years ago, do you swallow your pride and move your career along? Or do you think that that's not... Your, your pride is not that inexpensive? Your pride is more expensive. Made sense in my head. I'm just saying that, that you know, I, I have people that I dislike. We all do. But I have to think, if I were given an opportunity by this person or with this person, is that something I would pass up? And I'm not saying you're wrong to do it. I'm not saying you're wrong not to do it. I'm just saying it's a weird thing. It's a weird mathematical thing that goes on in your head of my integrity goes so far but i i have to think about my uh my business my future it's it feels mercenary and soulless to say it like that but honestly if you get mad at everybody then you're never going to publish again you know i had I had a disagreement with someone and uh, my then agent Jen backed me up on it, but she backed me up on it to me, but the person who I had the disagreement with was still someone she needed as a professional contact. And so she's like, your feelings are totally valid, but I got to do some work. and. I'm not going to give any more details than that, just, uh, but it's like, I did not begrudge her this because even though she agreed with me, she still had work to do and burning that bridge was not something that would be beneficial to her work. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a, sometimes it feels like how much does your soul, soul cost? But also, the question is, what hill are you willing to die on? You know? Um, the rent space in your head thing is something I heard in AA a lot. The person who was a jerk to you has gone off to be a jerk to everyone else. They aren't thinking of you in the endless litany of people they were jerks to. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, you know, I always wondered, um, this happened a lot when I was doing a, a web I was a webmaster for a computer game company. The, uh, the artists and I did not get along because the artists did not want to do any of the work on the site. They didn't want to give me any of their time, but they sure wanted to give me their opinions all the time. And my boss in marketing is just like, you know, you don't want to burn that bridge. I'm like, they've been insulting me. Why do you think there's a bridge still there? Why is nobody worrying about the bridge to me that they're burning? It's always worrying about somebody else's bridge. So, yeah, I try not to let those guys live on in my head because I'm sure they've moved on to bother some other web professional. That's when they were saying that they were trying to point me toward good video game uh, websites and they kept saying these websites were interactive and the only thing I could tell about their interactivity was they had black backgrounds. So that was an in-joke for a while, the, the interactive back, back, black background. 
Ooh, kids are asleep says grudges can be story fodder. Get some catharsis out in an indirect way. Yes. Thank you for listening to I Should Be Writing. If you would like to hear the extended version of this episode, you can support at Patreon for as little as a dollar at patreon.com slash mightymer. Or you could just come hang out with us on Twitch, where we will keep going with this conversation. You can learn more about me and my books and my podcasts at merverse.com. You can email me your questions about writing at mightymer at gmail.com. My socials are Twitter, Mighty Mer, uh, Instagram when I remember to put something up, and that's Mighty Mer numeral two. And you can catch this show and my other streams live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. Thank you to John Anilio for the use of his song, I Should Be Writing. And thank you to Summer Brooks for the awesome production she gives. So that's it for me. I'll see you next time. And until then, you should be writing. Do I do this to myself? This podcast is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you would also like to join the Ink Stained Fabulists, go to patreon.com slash mighty mer. On that shelf, on the spine of a paper bag, a paper bag.